Carbon-14 dating uses the same principles as other forms of radiometric dating methods, with a couple of important distinctions that will be covered here. Before I begin, however, I'm going to point out the first obvious flaw that creationists rely upon when attacking science. Carbon-14 dating is only useful to 50,000 years. In addition, you don't use carbon-14 dating on contaminated structures or items, or if you have no other choice you take clean samples wherever possible, or you make damn sure you explain what you're doing otherwise so that it can be accounted for. Also, you take multiple samples from the same item so that they can all be cross-checked. So let's move on. Let's take a look at a creationist video for claims about carbon-14 dating. You just described one of the many pitfalls to carbon-14 dating. Others include the thickness of the material surrounding the item to be dated, how much carbon-14 was in the uh, food material taken in by the plant or animal during its lifetime, its local environment where it was found, the kind of material it was found in, how close it is to the surface of the earth, how much solar radiation has uh, struck the item, and earth Solar radiation goes several feet down into the Earth. The fact that the Earth has more carbon-14 in its environment now than it did 5,000 years ago due to uh, industrialization, blah, 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 blah. All of these problems are known to scientists. Not only that, but each of these variables can be quantified and their effects predicted as a consequence. Extrapolation in science is extremely successful given correct data, and the results of the scientific method benefit everyone, including creationists who seek to undermine it. Now, before all you creationists start this business... You see, in so many words, you're stating that because scientists know this problem exists, they can calibrate for that, which is false. It is completely impossible for them to calibrate for this problem. You think that it's impossible for to account for material thickness? Really? So we cannot assess how thick a material is. We cannot assess the composition of the material, and we therefore cannot determine the effects of carbon-14 absorption into that material, and at what rates. It is completely impossible for them to calibrate for this problem. Really? We cannot tell what living creatures ate during their lifetimes. Really? Tell that to a zoologist and they'll tell you just how much of an idea they really have. It is completely impossible for them to calibrate for this problem. So we don't know what environment the material was in. We don't know what material it was found in. Really? So whoever dug it up had no idea what material they dug it out of. And even if they didn't, the scientists who are knowledgeable on the geologic column don't know how to study and analyse the materials that the fossils came from? They cannot go to the dig site? It is completely impossible for them to calibrate for this problem. Really? So we cannot determine how close to the surface of the Earth the object being dated is, and was, at the time that it was discovered? We can't tell how close or how far we would have had to go to have dug it up? Really? It is completely impossible for them to calibrate for this problem. Seriously? Someone could not have measured the distance that they had dug to retrieve the said object? So we cannot determine the amount of radiation from the sun that causes differing levels of carbon-14 in the atmosphere and in the surface of the planet? We cannot determine the level of carbon-14 that would build up in the ground and the sea? It is completely impossible for them to calibrate for this problem. Really? So we can't adjust for the amount of carbon in the atmosphere due to industrialization? Even though we know how industry began, when, where, and in what quantities, and therefore we subsequently know approximately how much, to a reasonable degree, how much carbon is in the atmosphere as a result? So those pollution studies, they don't count. And we cannot determine from all of the available information, including environmental pollution, blah, 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 and blah, how much carbon was likely to have been taken into a given object that it was exposed to. Carbon-14 dating, like all dating methods, is based on assumption. Really? Remember from my previous radiometric dating video that radioactive decay is governed by a precise mathematical law. To simplify this, we know from observational reality that no matter how much carbon-14 existed in an object prior to its death, the rate of decay follows a precise mathematical law. Do creationists really think that actual scientists are so stupid that they fail basic maths? That because of this they cannot make the appropriate calculations based on what they do know about the environment and extrapolate from there? 
that objects of known age such as the Dead Sea Scrolls and other religious documents are one of many items used for calibration of a carbon-14 test? Really? Scientists are that stupid? Or could it just be that the creationists who make such ridiculous claims are themselves either misinformed, or in the case of certain creationists, telling outright lies because they know they're wrong? It's easy when you think about it properly to see that making the claim. You see, in so many words, you're stating that because scientists know this problem exists, they can calibrate for that, which is false. It's completely asinine, and only someone who has been so heavily indoctrinated into that religious belief to the point where they will only trust what a fellow believer of their own congregation tells them to believe would fail to see how ridiculous this type of claim really is. The people who know how to use the tools correctly know what they're doing. They publish their methods and their results, and as such, the data can be cross-checked to ensure that they are consilient with other similar experiments. Regrettably, creationists not only do scientists and the scientific method a great disservice by making such claims, but they also do Christians, Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus and other religious believers a disservice by propagating such claims.